and uh, know your hardware really well. Uh, I think I'll have to move this as well because it seems to, okay. I think the first thing is that when you categorize children with congenital heart disease, you have to realize that there is just not enough industry support. So there are very few customized products which are made for catheter intervention in children. Um, so uh, that is a very big uh, limitation that we have to work with. So there are also a very large number of conditions that we have to deal with, number of variety of age groups from newborn to let's say an adolescent or sometimes even many adults and then you have to deal with a number of situations far more variety than the adult cardiology community deals with. So you are forced to improvise and there is a need a very strong need the most successful of us are the ones who improvise the most and you can't improvise unless you understand your hardware really well. So I think that's the real biggest uh, reason incentive to know your hardware very well. This is the one thing that I find uh, singularly missing in the cath lab uh, trainees nowadays is, is I think there is a tremendous reluctance to ask questions as to why a, cat a catheter does a certain thing or why a particular catheter or a wire is used or why. So the level of questioning is very important because only then can you actually uh, understand deeply what you do with catheters. So I think uh, this needs to be a major philosophic shift uh, and, and I think the purpose of this presentation really is to encourage that process uh, and to force you to think your way through a number of situations because it's very easy to let the senior operator make all the decisions and just assist but then you become incredibly passive when you don't learn anything. So one of the very key requirements when you catheterize is to ask those questions and if your, if you have a really good cath uh, trainer in the cath lab, he would ask all the questions to you and force you to think your way through and that's fortunately the way I was trained. Uh, not able to move forwards. Okay. So in this particular quiz we will be displaying the rules mostly as case scenarios. And after each question, you'll have about a minute to type in your replies and I'll turn on my chat box at that point of time. So be, be prepared to interact a little more than usual. And then we'll discuss the answers with a view of illustrate, uh, to illustrate the main learning points. So what <coughs> we will transform the answering part into a little bit of a discussion. And let's see how it works out. So the first case, I just took the exact same case that I catheterized uh, the most recent diagnostic cat that I have done and I just have put it out here. So we had a situation where a 6 kg infant with situs ambiguous, double outlet right ventricle, unbalanced common AV canal, uh, I am sorry this is not severe PAH, it was severe PS and PAPVC. And the purpose of this cat was to really uh, determine whether the patient had some pulmonary venous obstruction that was not easily identified on echo and that could have contributed potentially to a high PA pressure and therefore he would have been unsuitable for Glenn. So I am going to ask you a few questions, 6 kg child with this anatomy and you are basically catheterizing with the purpose of getting hemodynamics and PA pressures. How would you do it? What kind of which vessel will you access? So can we have an answer to this question? Which vessels would you access? I mean you are going to take access, which are the vessels you would access? So shall I turn on the chat button and let's see if, if I have, okay. Now I am going to ask, uh, that's very good Santosh. Uh, what I see is you are asking, you plan to access the femoral artery also. So may I ask you why you want to access the femoral artery in this particular case? So some Prashant says DORV. So this is the point that I would like to uh, illustrate out here in that now Santosh wants to get arterial pressure during the study which is a very reasonable thing to do if your study is going to be long. 
and Dev Deva Prashant wants to sing, think about entering the PA entry from and that you can do potentially from the artery side. But you know, as far as possible, my personal philosophy is to avoid puncturing the artery in an infant because a lot of the complications of infant cat is related to arterial puncture. So we'll we'll sort of illustrate as to what we did differently in this particular case. So sheets we've already discussed. I agree with five French femoral vein, but we'll discuss about artery. <laughs> so we'll talk about initial catheter choice subsequently. Uh, but essentially, I wanted to tell you that we could we can ascend, essentially get the entire information on this particular case without arterial puncture. Provided you are expeditious and you know exactly what you are doing. So in this particular catheter course you can see that the catheter is, this is actually a supracardiac PAPVC and the pulmonary veins are draining via a common chamber into a vertical vein and then uh, into the SVC and so on. So we are able to enter pulmonary veins individually, I haven't shown you all the pictures from the venous axis. You notice that this is situs ambiguous or basically here the visceral situs is inverses and we were able to enter the artery in the same, same using the same catheter which is basically a 4 French right femoral uh, Judkins catheter and then we were able to enter the pulmonary artery as well using the same catheter. So once you are in the femoral uh, in the aorta you can just go on to a lateral view and you know the great artery relationship by the echo and you can direct your guide wire into the pulmonary artery. So essentially the entire cat can be completed from the femoral venous axis alone and this is essentially what the purpose of understanding hardware is, is basically to be able to anticipate and plan your cat with the minimum of trauma to the child and with the maximum of results. So this is just an example that I have shown you. And essentially to tell you that I, I consider it very important to avoid arterial access whenever feasible. I recognize the need to monitor pressures but if your study is expected to be short and you can be and you are reasonably skilled in your catheterization process, you can avoid the need to monitor femoral arterial pressures throughout the study. A 5 French femoral venous access supply was sufficient here. We used a 4 French basic diagnostic catheter and a J tip thermo wire into entry into various sites and that could be exchanged for a pigtail catheter. So this is just a starter and I will take you to a more interesting challenge with the second case. <coughs> so this is a 3 month old infant who presents with severe PS and the patient has suprasystemic pressures and you are planning to do a balloon pulmonary valvotomy. The pulmonary annulus is 8 millimeter. Okay. So here are the questions. What do you plan for the axis? Mention C sheet sizes. So let's take one question at a time. I'll just I'll use the chat box to hide. What venous sheet would you use in this particular case? Can you mention that? Can anyone have a go straight forward? <laughs> What size femoral venous sheet would you use here? Does anyone want to try and take a chance? What about you guys? So here the answer is 5 French Deva. Uh, yeah, so we have an answer which says 4 French from Santosh and 5 French from uh, Deva. I think both are, both are appropriate but essentially this illustrates one point that you have a little more leverage with venous axis then you have an arterial axis. So it's okay to take 5 here. But it isn't absolutely wrong to take 4 in this particular case. Uh, I think the only reason you want to take 5 is to be more flexible with your balloon choices once you've got everything inside. But if you're pretty confident of getting, of executing your plan, then it's okay to do, to do this with 4. So both are right answers really. Both 4 and 5 are, are good options. Now the question is arterial axis. So the three of you are answering, do you want to take an arterial axis? If so, what is the main purpose of the arterial axis? And the answer is on the top of the chat box. Well, Deva Prashant says no need. Uh, 
here i have a slight disagreement i think yes i agree with santosh that you need you need to have an arterial access because the patient is supra systemic rv pressures and you have the potential of having cardiovascular compromise when you are trying to cross the pulmonary valve and you may not understand or realize it sufficiently in time and you may have a lot of damage in the process uh, so i think it's reasonable to get arterial access but the only purpose is to get pressure so you don't need a formal sheet in the femoral artery you can just do with a cannula or you can even perhaps do it with uh, uh with a with a with a radial access with an anesthesiologist helping you do it then stop then take stop and hold so essentially that is the purpose of arterial access and i think that's important in infants when you anticipate hemodynamic compromise and i agree that it's not always possible to anticipate hemodynamic compromise but with experience you sort of learn when to avoid arterial access and when to have arterial access okay now let's take case 2 what happens subsequently which catheter will you use to enter rv now this answer also will come very quickly if you can just type the answer as to which catheter will you use gr4 is the answer from here bourbon no i wouldn't agree with that what would you do with a bourbon it's it's okay to do a bourbon in terms of you will get an angiogram but then you'll have to take out your bourbon and then come up with another catheter so multi four i i really don't agree with multi four because it doesn't or swan so here i so here it's interesting i'm 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 finding a lot of views that are different from what i think should be done in this particular case uh i'll i'll discuss these three catheters bourbon will not get your guide wire through so you need to be expeditious you need to get your picture in the right ventricle and then move quickly on to balloon dilating the valve it's a baby that has supra systemic pressures you don't want too many catheter to go through the right ventricle and too much manipulation happening there a multi will not be shaped in a way that you can actually cross the pulmonary valve satisfactorily and a swan is really in this particular case uh, with the balloon tip swan it may not work in somebody who has critical ps it's okay for a relatively less severe ps but it's not good for a critical ps in my opinion so really in my opinion we have to use one of the jr catheters we use you know you have to recognize that the jutkins right comes in a variety of curves uh, and these are not designed really for pulmonary valve entry these are designed for right coronary artery cannulation and they come in the various curves I'm sorry depending on the sizes that are required uh, that for size of the child for the right coronary artery but we use one of those either a jr3 or a jr 3.5 actually mostly we use the jr 3 and a fourth trench jr 3 is what we use you understand that there is a secondary curve and there is a primary there are two curves here one curve is this one and this is the main curve primary curve and this is the secondary curve and and both these curves are useful when you're trying to enter the rv what i tend to do is i tend to make this this curve slightly different and i tend to make the catheter curve in this fashion to make this a little more pointing towards the right ventricular cavity and that allows easy entry into the right ventricular cavity so this is essentially the principle of how we would do the crossing with the pulmonary of the pulmonary valve we take this catheter and you can see that this this right coronary catheter is shaped in this fashion you can see that this curve allows the entry at point allows it to point downwards but then what you do is you talk the catheter you turn the catheter clockwise so that it moves and eventually points towards the pulmonary valve now this step is a skill based step needs a lot of uh, skill needs a very gentle handling and and good anticipation when you touch the right ventricular free wall when you see a whole lot of ectopics when you see std changes you got to be careful once you get here you need to aspirate and make sure that your blood is freely coming into the catheter and you can actually then advance your guide wire or you can have a situation where the catheter tip is against the anterior wall and if you try to do anything at that point you can actually dissect 
and a lot of damage happens to the pulmonary valve crossing in critical periods because of this. So this is something that this is the way we do it and mostly the way it is done for very severe PS. I am not talking about the straightforward ones. There pretty much anything will cross. But here you have to be careful. You have to get the catheter to point in the right direction. And you need to have the catheter with the right attributes. So the key attributes required for catheter, initial catheter for BPV or any, any condition where you are trying to cross a particular target or vessel. Is, is is very important. I think you have to have you have to have an understanding of the shape of the catheter, primary versus the secondary curves, vis a vis the anatomy that you are dealing with, the profile. Profile means it is four French, five French. Uh, so it's a low lowest possible profile that you have to use, but at the same time the profile should be having there should be enough of a lumen to accommodate the guide wire that is planning to use. What is torque? Torque is the movement that you make at the groin should be transmitted in a very predictable fashion to the movement inside the heart. So when you rotate the catheter in the groin, I can't actually. Yeah. So when you rotate the catheter in the groin, uh, you should have a predictable rotation inside the uh, heart. And if you have a soft catheter that is made out of very soft material your rotation will be transmitted into turning the catheter itself and twisting the catheter within itself rather than making the turn at the groin at the inside the heart. And you got there is no point having a straight catheter and torquing it because the catheter will only rotate. But if we have some curves in the catheter, that whole curve will be exaggerated uh, because your lever, your fulcrum is at the groin and the other end of the lever is inside the heart. So that is the whole essence of torque and you do a variety of things to catheters to improve torqueability. Stiffness is important for the catheter because when you torque the catheter, you will find some of the right coronary catheters will become kinked. So the catheter should have an inherent strength about itself so that when you torque it, it reliably happens out there. Memory. After a couple of uses, the catheter should continue to do what it is doing. It should not become completely useless and that happens sometimes especially with reused catheters. The tip should be atraumatic. You can't have while you're doing all this inside the heart. The tip can actually damage the heart. So if you have a atraumatic tip, so these are the essential attributes, and you need to analyze the catheter in that fashion. <coughs> Important pictures for you. All catheters that have torque have a braided material in the wall. So if you actually are up to it, you take a catheter that's being discarded and cut the catheter in beyond the tip. And you will find there is metal braiding in on the walls of the catheter. So very, very important that is done primarily to allow torqueability, to give it strength and to prevent the lumen from collapsing while you turn it around. So this is a very important attribute for all catheters. It is not a straight plastic tube. It is a tube that is reinforced with steel wires depending on you know it could be some other wires also but essentially a metal wire that, that goes around it except at the tip. You can see the tip is atraumatic and this can anyone identify this catheter. It's a very useful catheter. <coughs> can anyone identify this catheter? If you have used it you will identify. Yes absolutely right it is a guiding catheter right coronary guiding catheter 5 French. Uh, so this is very important catheter because when you do let us say a BPV or, or a situation where you are dealing with pulmonary atresia and intact ventricular septum, it is sometimes very useful to have a guiding catheter because it will allow a balloon to go through it and, and, and all the coronary work is done through the guiding catheter. So you can see that this portion is reinforced so that whatever torque you give at the groin is transmitted without fail to the tip. Then there is progressive softening less reinforcement and at the tip there is no reinforcement and this strip tip is atraumatic. So this is a very important aspect of catheter design. So uh, some, old, some more end hole catheters I am going to ask you to identify which is unrelated to this particular case but here are some more end hole catheters because in the context of this case I thought we should talk about some end hole catheters. What, this ca what catheter is this one? Can someone tell me what catheter is this one? The most the catheter on the left. No, cobra is this one. Cobra is the one on the right. Cobra is like a cobra. What catheter is the one? It is. I'm hearing a lot of J, which is not a J. 
it is not a jet kit sorry so this is a very useful catheter which is there from the adult hardware and i use it very often to calculate the duct and this is basically a renal double curve catheter so this what you have is a renal double curve catheter used to enter the renal artery and and very useful for pediatric hardware as well a, a modified version of the renal double curve catheter what's the one in the middle so it just goes to show that there is a lot that you can learn from adult hardware what is the one in the middle so so some of you have had months rotation in the catheter you can all come in front what is this catheter and we used it very often it's a coronary catheter it's known as the extra backup or ebu and again has tremendous uses in pediatric hardware uh, also has for us we use it to consistently cannulate the vertical duct and should time permits i'll show you an example of that so this of course is the cobra which is shaped like a cobra so these are all useful catheters in different circumstances so coming back to the case uh, of course i'm sorry i'll i'll finish up with the j jls the jls have a whole family of curves which you can see out here which we don't usually have access to 1 1.5 but we use the 3 and 3.5 it's actually very useful to use the 2 and 2.5 if you want to cannulate the coronary in the in a baby and these are the amplots family of catheters which are amplots right and amplots left there are two types of amplots right the big curve ones are the ar ones and the small curve ones are the modified ar ones and, and actually you need the small curve ar to enter the aortic valve in a difficult aortic stenosis in an older child the other als you sometimes need to do it for entering branch pas when you have difficulty in entering the lpa sometimes you can use the al so these are catheters that have some utility in pediatric hardware okay now i'll come back to the case uh, so we've got the catheter so you we've got the catheter in the position that i showed you with what will be your preferred guide wire to cross this valve i'll come back to the details of the case it's a small baby 4 and 1/2 kilo 2 month old critical ps supra systemic rv pressures you've got your catheter a four french rca pointing towards the pulmonary valve in the lateral view what is your guide wire i'm going to ask you guys okay so uh, straight thermo now i'm going to ask you a lot of people are asking straight thermo it's a reasonable choice but there are some pretty significant problems that you can have with a thermo what is the length you will use shipage shipage or uh, santosh what length will you use of the over eight thermo exchange length that's correct what is the biggest disadvantage of the thermo there are two disadvantages of the over eight thermo one of course it's not a very radio opaque catheter it's actually sometimes pretty difficult to see but that if you have good cath lock system that wouldn't matter but what is the other disadvantage the other disadvantage really is that its body is not stiff enough you know unlike the o35 thermo which has a really stiff body the o18 thermo does not have a stiff body so if you have a situation where you have to take a balloon over this o18 thermo you may not have the balloon follow all the curves what may happen is that the wire may completely coil within the rv and the wire the balloon may the wire may come out well before you actually can advance the balloon across the wire so so i tend to not use the uh, overnight thermo although it slips in uh, and and yeah so what is an sv5 is it what does sv5 stand for is it a v18 type of wire so essentially uh, the, the important thing here is that you need the combination of the attributes of a thermo with a stiff wire you need a stiff wire to support the body of the balloon but you need a soft tip to allow it to safely cross the valve without damaging so you need both not just the thermo attributes which are soft tip but you need a stiff body and that's the essence of what kind of a wire you need here and i'll tell you what wires you need so essentially the guide wires that you need of course what over 8 is reasonable i think that's fine unless you use a tie shack mini in which case you need an over 4 the tip needs to be straight because you need to just cross the valve so that's important to understand that there are balloons available the wires available that have a stiff body and a soft floppy segment 
the floppy segment should be straight and allows you to cross. The examples of two such wires are platinum plus O18 wire manufactured by Boston Scientific and V18. V18 has a thermo like tip and an extremely stiff body. So that stiff body will nicely support the balloon but the soft tip will allow you to cross the valve in a chromatic fashion. So this is what is ideal for the pulmonary valve. I am sure you guys can, can modify, you can, can use your other hardware and get away with it but there will be an occasional case where your O18 thermo will really let you down. You will be in a perfect position and by the time you are trying to get your advance your balloon the whole thermo can actually come out of the of the, of the position that you have secured. So, so it is important to try and get the best wire possible if you have the wire available that combines stiffness with softness at the tip that is the wire you need. So essentially guide wires are designed in this fashion. They have a mandrel which is very stiff, could be made very very stiff, it could be relatively less stiff for the rest softer wires but essentially they have a core. That core does not extend all the way to the tip. There is a tip which is essentially relatively floppy. This is how many of the conventional guide wires are designed and for example V18 will have a relatively soft floppy portion which needs, needs to be in this particular infant about a centimeter or two long. You do not need a very long floppy segment which you have in many coronary wires but I think some of the coronary wires like cross it have relatively short floppy segments that allows you to actually cross the wire and gives you a stiff body to support the balloon. Otherwise what happens is that the, when you are trying to advance the balloon on the wire the force that you transmit is used to fold the wire inside the RV or RA and, and actually the whole assembly comes up. But if you have a stiff body the force that you transmit onto the balloon actually goes on top of the wire all the way. So essentially this portion is floppy and this is stiff and that is typical for most of the balloons that you use for critical PS. So, so we have got a wire which is V18 or let us say uh, platinum plus in my preference but let us say you manage still a pretty good position with a 018 thermo uh, that is also reasonable provided you have an excellent guide wire distal wire position. So what balloon now? Let us look at this balloons and we will talk a little bit about balloons. So type 10 Kaishak 2, that is a good good thought, I, I agree that 10 Kaishak 2 is actually a pretty good option here. I, I, I think all of you are saying Kaishak 2 but let us say you had a pretty bad situation where you really could only get a coronary wire through this particular, uh, particular valve. So then what are your options? If your coronary wire is through the valve you know, not coronary balloon, you have Kaishak mini. The mini tie shack is essentially a tie shack type balloon with similar sizes that actually goes only over a 014 wire. It is a wonderful bailout when you have the worst, the sickest baby that you are dealing with. If you have the sickest baby with critical PS, a tie shack mini does the job. It has a lot of disadvantages. It is very soft, it needs very gentle handling, it deflates rather slowly but it saves lives really in these sort of situation. The coronary balloon also is reasonable if you do not have tie shack mini. So you can pre dilate with a 5 mm coronary balloon in this particular case and then go on to using a more uh, bigger balloon. So somebody says 10 millimeters that is reasonable uh, anywhere between 100 to 120 percent of the uh, 100, 100 to 120 percent of the annular size is okay but remember the 10 goes through a 5 French it can, it may not go through a 4 French. So in which case you, your access is important. So if you had actually obtained 4 French in the beginning like Santosh I remember you said 4 French then you should take, you cannot take 10 you have to take 8 or 9. Sometimes 9 struggles through 4 French but 10 really needs a 5 French. So remember that when you get access because you cannot have a situation where you have got a different access and you are not struggling with a different kind of a balloon as any delay is not a very good situation. So which balloon is what it is, then uh, it is very important to understand the attributes of a balloon. So what attributes one looks for in a balloon, we will talk about it briefly, we need the diameter right. What length? Did somebody answer that question? What length will you use in this particular case? So, so 2 centimeter length, 
that's correct. You don't need a very long balloon and a long balloon will really sit in the right ventricle in this baby, but you need long balloons when you do aortic valves. What kind of a wire accommodated you have? We have talked about it over eight. Actually, the tie shack balloons take O2 one wires and the profile, we have talked about it, four trends for less than nine and five trends for ten and above. Worst pressure, remember, is just a few atmospheres, like two or three, but that's enough for a baby with critical PS. And cost is important, so tie shack meaning is expensive, but you know, sometimes worth the cost. So it's very important to consider that reusability tie shack mini is for limited reusability, but tie shack tools are okay. So let's take case three now. So that, that's the case with balloon pulmonary valvotomy. Let's go on to another case which is very interesting. And this is all real life cases which we've done. So here it is. A three year old 9 kg asymptomatic baby with a child with a severe aortic stenosis, but doing well, you know, good ventricular function. 80 millimeter gradient with bicommissional aortic valve needs an aortic valvotomy. Aortic annulus is 12 millimeters. Okay, LV function is normal. Okay, let's do the, go to the questions. Access arterial sheet size. Answer these questions. Let's do one question at a time. What sheet size would you want in the artery? Five French. Five French. Lots of five French. Okay. That's interesting. Somebody says four French. Four French. Okay. So that's very interesting. Now we'll have to think of the balloons that go through these four and five. Okay. Is venous axis needed? Let's do the next question. Yes or no? Okay. Can I ask why? Why do you need venous axis? Pacing. Very good. So that, that part of it is sorted out very well. So let's do this again. And I agree with venous axis. So what catheters do you anticipate using now to cross the valve? What's your first preferred catheter to cross this pulmonary? Uh, firstly, you, you can do it even with, a, with anything, with a JR, with a RCA, perfect. With a multi-RCA. I don't know what a multi-RCA is, but I think a JR 3.5 or JR 3 is pretty good for this particular situation. And then, okay, what will be your initial catheter choice, choice to cross the valve? Aortic valve. Actually, we've talked about RCA. And then, which wire would you use? I'm sorry, I meant to say wire. Which wire would you use right here? What wire will you use now? I'm sorry, not the catheter. Wire. So somebody saying gate is that's absolutely wrong. No, it has to be straight wire. Two phi termo. Shitage. So two phi termo straight, absolutely straight. One eight. So we've got lots of wires that are going across this valve. Remember the aortic analysis is 12, okay? So you got to come up with a balloon that goes over this, goes over through your four trench sheet over this 1-8 wire and crosses the valve. So people have to think about the downstream steps before we first cross the wire, then do what? Then you'll get an exchange wire, right? You get your catheter across and you'll get an exchange wire. Okay, fine, which wire then? After you exchange, which wire would you exchange? SV5, what is the size BMW, all kinds of things, but what is the diameter of that wire? Is it 018, 025, 035? What size? No, 12 mm annulus, 018. Okay, 018. Now, fine, we'll, uh, we'll then go on to next. We'll talk about this balloon next. What balloon will you use next? Sorry. So, you got your wire across. This is your wire. A few things about the wire I'll just tell you for the aortic valve. You need to have a wire that actually curves in the cavity. And, and I'm not showing it really well, but you need to have a really long floppy wire that sits in the, the, the floppy segment of this wire needs to be nice and long. That will make the whole thing very atraumatic. Otherwise, the left ventricle can be punctured and that has happened. A lot of damage happens. So the wire Unlike in a pulmonary artery where you need a relatively short floppy segment, let's say <coughs> in a child, here in the left ventricular cavity, the longer the floppy segment, the better it is. Okay. The other thing that can happen with a stiff wire is that the ventricle will contract around the stiff wire and there will be a fall in cardiac output because the ventricle will not be able to contract fully. So it's very important in children <coughs> excuse me, to have a stiff, really a, a soft wire in the right ventricle. Okay, now let's talk about balloons. You've got a 12 annulus. What balloon? 
Now Santosh has put in the fourth front sheet, somebody else has put in the, okay, 80% of the annulus. Great. So what balloon? 10? 12 annulus, 80% approximately 10. 10 will go through 5 friends over an 8, you've got the job, partly done. Let us just go on, it's perfect to start off with. Now I'm going to take you to the next question. So once you've dilated a 10 mm balloon, so you've decided that you've got or done a 10 mm but you have a residual gradient of 45 millimeters mercury. Now you want to go on to a 12 and your technician tells you that the only 12 mm balloon in stock requires a 7 mm introducer. You have already dilated with a 10 mm balloon and you have a 45 millimeter residual gradient with no AR. What do you want to do next? What would you do next? Now let's have answers on this. Redo with 10. So what will you get? You've done redone with 10, same result. What do you do next? You're falling short of the analysis substantially, so you're not getting what more. Next. So I'm going to ask you options. Will you accept the residual gradient of the 45 after a 10 mm balloon and tell the parents, sorry, we didn't do a good enough job, we'll have to come again. So somebody says accept, accept, accept. That is very interesting. Okay. Does anyone agree to this option? Upsize your sheet to 7F and remember that the child weighs 9 kilos. How many say yes to this answer? One says yes, another say no. I am also very reluctant to do this. No, no. Okay, fine. Santosh, then what will see you? What will do? Is there something else you can do at this point? Let's say this patient has only one, has raised money for only one procedure with great difficulty. What do you want to do? Can you help this patient still? Is there anybody who can think of an answer here with the catheter hardware that you have in your lab? Okay, let's answer, let's show you a chart and tell me how many of you are familiar with this chart. What chart is this? Has anyone seen such a chart before? That's the old set of no, no, no's. Now let's look at the new set of answers. What is this chart trying to tell you? No one has seen this chart. So that's very important. I think this is where you need to little think out of the box. This is a chart for double balloon procedure. And in the aortic valve, you have the option of double balloon. So you can actually take two four front sheets in this particular child or one five and one four and actually accomplish a pretty good result of ballooning the valve to the right annulus. So in fact, in this case, we could take two four French sheets in the artery and use two seven millimeter balloons simultaneously and do a double balloon and you'll get 11.5 annulus. You combine an eight with a seven, you can get a 12.3 annulus. So this is the essential thing and this is what we did in this particular child. And we uh, were able to eliminate the gradient with no AR in this particular case. So you you, you think that the elements of uh, aortic balloon is very important. The RV pacing is terribly important when you have a child who is beyond the age of let's say two or three when your ventricle is vigorously contracting and the balloon can move to and fro significantly. Then second element which is very important in this particular case is to get the right balloon, the right hardware and to plan the procedure in such a way that you completely relieve AS. Uh, and and, and the, one of the options that you do when you what you can can you use when you have such a situation is to do a double balloon rather than just accept a result which is suboptimal. So this is case three. Let's go on to case four. Case four is a three-year-old, 12 kg child with tetralogy, multiple large aortopulmonary collaterals. There is forward flow through very narrow pulmonary valve, and you have to perform a cap for comprehensive assessment of the matter. What catheter will you choose for the aortogram? Very straightforward. I don't think there is much going to be much debate on this. Pigtail 5 French, perfect. So remember that, you know, you need a really good flows here. Let's say this child has a saturation that is uh, pretty close to, uh, say, 90%. So what you need here is that actually you need extremely high flow rates. You need flow rates of 18, 20, and, and that can be accomplished by the widest possible lumen with the shortest possible catheter. A five French pigtail, you need to, if you get a short one, you can get very high flows. But if you have, you don't have the short one, 
you have the option of taking the six French through the Venus axis down the descending aorta and you can still have very good angiograms. So this is something that, that you can you can think about a pigtail and, and the sizes I told you five or six is fine and the types essentially multiple side holes relatively short and which route I told you that if you have to go through the venous route you can take a six French and, and actually take it down the descending thoracic aorta via the RV which we do often do out here or you can take a five, five French and go through the uh, arterial route but make sure that you can deliver the kind of contrast that you want to deliver. So let us do a little bit of side hole catheters, name them. So the first one everybody will get, what is this? The first one on the suburban, what is this? Sorry, the one below, reversible, perfect, great. Okay, tell me what catheter is this? This is actually not very easy to identify. I will tell you this is an NIH catheter because the tip is actually not shown clearly. This is a pigtail and what is this? This is an angled pigtail which you which you can find in in lot of adult hardware and we often use it. It does not really matter. We can take either of them. The important thing is that many pigtails are marker pigtails which are very useful in some circumstances. I think it is important to recognize the need to use marker pigtails when you want to make accurate measurements. This all of you recognize is a multipurpose catheter. <coughs> it is important to recognize multipurpose comes in two types A1 and A2 or B1 and B2 the curves are the ones which are A or B but 1 and 2 this stands for a single hole versus a single hole plus two side holes which is very close to the tip. So the very important to understand the multipurpose catheter because sometimes you use this multipurpose catheter to deliver coils and you may have a situation where the coil will emerge out of the side hole and then get stuck and this has happened to us. So very important when you use multipurpose to deliver coils you use only the end hole multipurpose which does not have side holes or and if you use multipurpose for the purpose of getting an angio after having gotten to a point where you do not want to come out of then you can use the side hole multipurpose catheter. So very important to recognize multipurpose as well. So pigtail, straight and angle, Berman, NIH, reverse Berman and multipurpose. Okay, case 5 I think we will do this as the last case or second last case we have is probably running short of time. Okay, so let us do case 5 now. This is again a real life case. This is a 6 year old, 24 year old child, 24 kg child who has had a tech repair and has bilateral branch PA stenosis and has right ventricular failure, is having significant TR, is not doing well and there is bilateral proximal branch stenosis of the pulmonary arteries. Okay, so let us discuss some strategy here. What catheters have been used and why? So let us go to the previous uh, case and you can see that we have uh, used a specific kind of pigtail, the marker pigtail. I do not think anyone will worry about this. The other catheter actually is a glide wire that has been glide catheter that has been used to cross into the difficult, it had a, there was some difficulty in exchanging catheters here. So we use the glide catheter which is very useful when you are, when you got a guide wire across through a difficult situation and this patient had a very large RA. So the guide wire was tending to form loops in the RA and this glide catheter allowed us to get there. Okay, now, now you have to start stenting. What hardware will you organize before you start the stenting? This is one thing that I have noticed that there are two styles of doing cats. My personal style is I list out all the hardware before I start the cap. List out the hardware for the typical expected scenario and let us say you have a, another scenario where this does not work, then you need a backup plan. So I think listing out your catheters and telling your technicians to get everything kept ready will save a lot of time between catheter exchanges. So let us list out your hardware. Let us look at what uh, everybody has to say out here. Can anyone start looking at what you want to use? What wire would you want to use here and why? So you want to set what wire you want to use. So what kind of SIP wire? So the answer from within our group is an Amplard SIP wire. Uh, I, I really do not know what is an SB5 but I, I know that Amplard stiff is a very good option. What should be the length of the floppy segment of the Amplard stiff wire? Your patient is a 6 year old 
I'll give you three options: one centimeter, six centimeter, three centimeter. Can anyone choose? Three or one is correct. Six is too long, Sadish, uh, because you don't have you won't have enough length uh, of the stiff portion inside the right place. What shape will you use? The shape will be determined by what balloon you'll use and what stent will you use. Okay, I agree that sheet will be determined lightly, but essentially the rule which we have for sheet is that we take one or two frets more than the balloon size. The balloon profile is let's say eight frets. Ideally, you should have a ten frets sheet. <laughs> Balloons. Balloons are diameters and lengths and steps. So these are the things that you have to assemble and I'm not trying to get into the specifics of this particular case, but you have to recognize that organizing yourself before you stenting, stent a branch pulmonary artery is terribly important. So let's do some, uh, uh, let's do some uh, sort of identifications here. So here is a wire, you agree that this portion is stiff, you can see that it has a greater radio density then the soft portion. The soft portion is about 3 centimeter floppy. We like as distal a wire position as possible. We the distal end of the wire so that we get some stability of the wire tip and the, the very, very important, the most important step in PS stenting is to get your wire deeply positioned, firmly positioned in a fixed possible way and a good length of the stiff portion in the, across the stented prospective segment where I go to stent. Okay, this is the tip of the sheet. Uh, and this is the stent that you are going to deploy, the length of the stent. Very useful to have these external landmarks. We have already stented the LPA as you can see out there and left the catheter there at that point. We haven't taken out the catheter, but we have left the catheter and now we are stenting the RPA. We have got the stent across this particular portion. We have a sheet that is adequate for a balloon and the stent in this particular portion and then you have the wire which is very stiff, very, very important. So this is the final result that you can get in this particular case uh, where you have had to access and notice that this particular catheter is really curved and we had a lot of trouble getting into the LP. Okay, so the wire is a super stiff amplots or any stiff wire, you guys, there are lots of stiff wires, there is Rosen wire, there is super stiff and there are other makes that I am not familiar with. Very small children use one centimeter floppy. Sheep could be a cook sheep, uh, could be braided, but not necessarily so. Balloon size she, of uh, the sheet should be one plus two French, the balloon catheter size. Balloon diameter should be the size of the adjacent native vessel. Length should be a little longer than the chosen stent, and stent should be long enough to cover the stenotic segment. So the measurements are terribly important, and that's why the marker is there. Okay, quick questions before we go on to the last case. What is this device? What is this device? Very good. Satish has got it right. This is actually a cubiform ASD device. And uh, that's because the both the discs are nearly of the same size and you have a very small waist inside it. And what device is this? This everybody would get it right as well. No, it's not an ASD device. The RA disc is substantially smaller than the, the P, P, LA disc is substantially smaller than the RA disc. This is a PFO device. Absolutely right. And what are the sizes? So the unique feature of the PFO device is that the LA disc is substantially smaller than the RA disc. The sizes it comes in is 18, 25, and 35. And that is the size of the RA disc, not of the LA disc. What is this structure? What is this catheter? Can you identify it? You haven't seen it, that's why. Cutting balloon. No. You have a cutting balloon like this, you will cut a lot of things. Please don't say such things. Sorry. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Now tell me what is what is it? I have used it, but you guys haven't used it, but you have, that's exactly it. It's a blade septoxy catheter, it's a park 
blade septostomy catheter and it is used to make an incision in the atrial septum when you have an older child with transfusion and just wanted you to identify it but let us do the last case before we wind up you are this is again a real life scenario that happened to be uh, I was I, I had a 4 hour old duly born child with DGA he presented to the NICU of a hospital DGA intact ventricular septum severe desaturation in the 30s no response to prostaglandin and I just had a balloon septostomy catheter with me and an echo machine ok nothing else no sheet no other hardware no wire no sheet no catheter question is can you perform a balloon atrial septostomy yes sir since I am asking but obviously the answer has to be counterintuitive if you want to say yes but you will have to tell me how Can somebody answer this? Can it be done? Yes, umbilical vein. So the important thing to recognize is that in the umbilical vein, you can actually introduce directly the septostomy catheter. You don't need a sheet. You don't need anything. Just as you introduce an infant feeding tube, you prepare the umbilical stump and just introduce the septostomy catheter. Go, no problem. And then you can just do it with echo guidance, and you can have a very good result in this as you see in this particular case you do not need any further hardware ok try and identify this very useful item if you have not been able to identify there is something worth procuring going to the adult side and finding out what it is and then try to acquire it is a very good idea what is it this is the whole set of things that comes and it is very useful for difficult access for us it is also very useful for pericardial sentences you guys should be able to handle it. So this is a micro consciousness. Okay. So it comes with a DD. It comes with a guide wire that is beautiful because it's got this long floppy segment and a very stiff body out here. Then it comes with a very nice inner select and outer catheter and very useful for axillary access, for pericardial sentences, for difficult arterial access the micropuncture set is a real life saver ok so I think I am going to come to the very end of my uh, talk so the, the question I am going to say that the fact I'm, that the final concluding slides are if you intend to intervene because tomorrow by the time you guys are practicing regular pediatric cardiology diagnostic task is going to disappear nobody is going to do diagnostic you are only going to do intervention and you have bypassed the route that we have all taken that is doing a lot of diagnostic care, understanding angiography and then going ahead, understanding hardware and then going ahead to do intervention. So you are actually in a very difficult situation. So it is very important for you to really ask questions on catheter. The most important attribute I think of a fellow is to ask questions. Not necessarily to everybody but to vendors on catheter design, strategy, improvisations, why? is a particular thing done a certain way is very very important then spend time understanding hardware something that nobody is doing I, I notice in my own group very few people are working or understanding hardware with cath lab technologists they are the most useful resource uh, experienced technician will tell you more about hardware because they handle it they play with it they wash it they re-sterilize it they know about it far more intimately than you do adult colleagues always cross talk go and see their hardware to see what they do with their coronary I have learned so much by looking at the adult colleagues and adapting coronary hardware to pediatric usage and product manuals so read them look at them understand them because you know you have certain sheet sizes recommended for certain balloon sizes for certain devices you got to know it and play with catheters if the catheter is going to be discarded use it cut a catheter see the grade you will understand what it is something that people need to do thank you so that is it I think this is just about enough time we finished it. you have any questions guys? Okay thank you I am done. Uh